just going to override it away in the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation of this morning. A couple of other versions, but mostly primarily this morning in the New Living Translation. The Word of God says, So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of the creation. So he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all of his creation work. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. When the Lord made God, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth. And there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and the three he planted the man, and there, excuse me, and there planted he, and there he planted the man he had made. We're going to go to one other scripture, Isaiah 45 and 3. Just one verse of scripture. And it says, And I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, secret places, secret riches. And I will do this so you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, the one who calls you. Father, again, I thank you this morning. Lord, this, uh, allow me to take my time this morning, Lord God. So I want to make sure that the people of God hear what you have for them on this morning. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing, that all that you will do, that they will be able to apply this word to their lives. And everything will be the better of it because of your word. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Bless you, honey, you and adore you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord this morning. I want to talk to you all this morning from a subject. It's okay. He blessed you for a reason. It's okay. He bless you for a reason. How many of you all this morning think that, that God has blessed you for a reason? I just want to make sure that, amen, amen. I want to make sure that I've got the right crowd in here this morning. Uh, because for those who were with us before we got here, at the end of last year, and even early on in the year, we talked about living in expectation. Amen. Do y'all remember that? Living in expectation. This is a year, also a year of harvest. Well, saints, I want to remind you and encourage you this morning that here in America, we know that this is a country of fruit, the land of the free, a land that's flowing with milk and honey. So there's plenty and plenty and plenty for us as children of God to get exactly what God would have us to do, to have what we, to place in our lives to do his will. Amen. And there's also some things that God wants to give us. Hmm. I tell you this morning, I believe that God wants us to get a piece of the pie. He wants us to get a piece of the pie, not just for us, because he does want to bless us, but also so we can be in a place where we can go out and there's no restrictions on getting God's will done in the earth. Amen? There's some people that are going to come to know Jesus because of not just your prayers, but some of your tangible things. Some of the things that you have tangible that God has blessed you with, God is going to use to pour out 
Oh, come on now. I think about this. You are in the right place at the right time. Here we see in Isaiah, we saw, um, if you still got your Bibles open in Isaiah, there was something where God needs for us to focus in order to consume it. But I see it clearly. I see it loud and clear. I see it, but it is my job as the pastor to make sure that you see it. Okay? I believe that God has designed everything around you that's going on around you in your life to bless you. It's not by chance that you're sitting in this place this morning. I know some of you had other places that you could have been this morning, but you came to the house of God. He has tailor-made your environment to bless you more than you can imagine. Because the Word of God says that I'll give you more than you can even think or imagine. Now, I know I got some imagination, so I know that y'all got some imagination. I was talking to my wife yesterday, and we were talking about what would you do? Because sometimes, hmm, I'm going to take my time, sometimes we get in a place where we wait until the manifestation happens before we, we start doing what we believe that God has called for us to do. But God wants us to prepare. I was telling Simone, I was, saying, I was asking her, I said, babe, you know, what would you do if, if, let's just, you know, I just picked out a number. You know, I could have used a larger number than what I'm going to use, but I just used $500 billion. Can y'all, can you think about some things that you can do with $500 million? But are you going to wait until the $500 million come into your life before you start realizing exactly what you got to do? Okay, because I thought about that. I think about, those are the type of things I think about. I say, okay, Lord, obviously from the top, I'm going to give my tithes and offerings. I'm going to bless some people. I'm going to do something. And I'm definitely going to sow into, there's a young lady who sold into the ministry before we even open up the doors. And I say, Lord, because of her seed, when she believed in the thing that we just spoke, before we even had a service, she had already sowed a seed. So I said, Lord, if you give me some money like that right there, oh, I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to take care of her, her kids, and anything. She ain't going to have to worry about nothing. But if we wait for the manifestation to happen, we might not know exactly what to do when the blessings come. Amen? Yeah. Y'all. So are y'all following me this morning? Yeah. Okay. So I think about this. As I said, God has tailor-made your environment to bless you more than you can imagine. Believe it or not, your upbringing that was going on has made has, has been tailor-made for you. Your upbringing, your community, your schools, even those bullies who was picking on you when you was at school. I know all of y'all wasn't all tough all the time. You had to deal with some bullies sometimes. Because I know me, my, myself, I had to get in a couple of scuffles. But God, everyone else has had to endure some things in their lives. Has some people in here endured some things? Okay. But just understand that that was strategically placed in your life for a time such as this. Your very footsteps were ordered and directed by God. God says here in his word in, in Psalm 37, 23, he says, he said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delight him in his way. So God already said that your steps was already ordained. It was directed by God. But here, let me break it down again. In the New Living Translation, it says the Lord directs the steps of the godly. So is everybody in here godly? Amen? Come on now. I know everybody in here is godly because I've talked to you. I spent some time with you one way or another. I know that everybody, so I believe that God is talking about you. He said he delights in every detail of their lives. So everything that's going on in your life, God delights in it. Everything. Every time that you had to go through some things, he was preparing you. He was preparing you for the next step or the next phase or the next dimension in your life. Those living conditions that you had when you was growing up, because I know everybody ain't doing it like they are now. Those living conditions were created to help you to be a better you, to be as better, to be better than you was than you were before. So those hurts that you went through, oh man, because I know I've been hurt. Those pains, those times that you failed, those delays, those defeats, those destructive habits were all directed. But every victory, every accomplishment, every accolade, was God's plan for you to become a better you, to get the best that you can be. He delights in the, the, the details in your life. Like a natural father, God wants to see you grow. 
He don't want you to stay in the same place that you were before. He wants to see you better than you was when you first came out of the womb. He like he loves to see you every time that you make you get to another phase in your life. He's rejoicing with you. Because I remember just like even with my children when they were riding their bicycles, because the first time when I was able to let go the handlebars and they rode, and I was praising, I was like, good job, baby. But I love to see them grow. So how much more then will our natural father enjoy us growing in our life? Amen? Amen? So we already know that we're in the fifth month of the year. We're in the fifth month, halfway through the fifth month. And God has already partaken in his handiwork in the details of our life. Every month has its orders. Every month possesses its eating just for you. A planting. A prepared place is awaiting for you to walk in into this year. An eating is where God put the man who he had formed. In Genesis 2 and 8, it'll be on the screen, it says, Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he placed a man and made it. Oh my God. So Eden, Eden, if you don't know, Eden means a, it means delight. The idea or concept is a garden of delight, a place of God's blessing and prosperity. Are you okay with that? Are you, can, can you, you know, because we already know that, that, that God can trust you with the finances. He can already trust you with the blessings because you didn't give up when you were going through the trials and tribulations of your life. Hmm. A place that God has prepared you for a place of blessing and prosperity. But notice what God did. God had to prepare the man first before he prepared the place. So there's a place our Heavenly Father had prepared us. He's prepared it just for you. A delight someplace. A place where um, you are destined to be blessed. A place where you are destined to prosper. The word suggests something has happened, so suggests that something has to happen first before you have to possess it. So if you know anything about it, again, a seed, when it's planted in the ground, you have to prepare it. If you want that seed to truly grow, you got to prepare that ground first before you put that seed in. So God has prepared us. Amen? Genesis 2 and 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. So we see that man was formed and developed before he was even prepared. So God had already, if I can't say it like this, he prepared the ground before he breathed into him. Right? So if you're if, if you have a yard, okay. I said I'm just going to take my time. So if you have a yard and you're trying to get that, that soil to grow, sometimes you got to go and take out those rocks and take out those weeds and different things like that before you put the ground down. So there's some things that we went through, some rocks and some weeds that had to be taken up before God can truly pour out the blessings. Because think about it, if, if you was living like you're living now when you were living in the world, it would have killed you. Does that make sense to you? Because I know, I think about sometimes, like, man, how come I couldn't live in, you know, go to the nice hotels or have a nice car and nice houses and stuff? Because I wasn't prepared to receive it. Because if I had gotten all those quote-unquote things then, it probably could have killed me. And I probably wouldn't be up here standing before you now because I would have been at the house, laid back, watching TV, getting ready for a movie or something. But God prepared us. He allowed us to go through the trials and tribulations because he was preparing us for his blessings. So does that make sense to you? So here we go. We are all in process of development for in our own individual eating. God is preparing us for the blessing. Like Israel, before they entered into Canaan, there was a Red Sea, the Persian of the wilderness. They had the building, building of the trust. A, 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 a subordination of leadership and then the Jordan the sanctifying of the people all before they could enter into Eden or should I call it a wealthy place many of us have not 
and prepared to receive what God wants for us because he wants to bless us, like I said before. But we wasn't ready. But I believe that the children of God are ready right now. I, re I believe we're, we're, we're like a funnel if God could just say, okay, you know, just pour it out on me, Lord. Do some of y'all want a net-breaking experience? I know I do. I know I want to be able to, to pour about, like I said, about that 500 million. I didn't tell y'all the whole story. Because if I had the 500 million, my God. Man, the people that I could just pour into, the communities that we could change for the good. Because I do understand the Bible says the poor will be with us always. But I tell you what, Lord, allow and use me to help the poor. Because I'm doing it now. Because he said, if, if you're faithful with a little bit, I'll bless you with much. So, Lord, I'm faithful with the $500. So I know I'll be faithful with the $500 million. Can I get an amen on it? All right, all right. Because I know if you're faithful with the little bit, he'll bless you with much. So, think about this. This is a preparation period that can be painful. It can be tedious. Which in some cases, some people just want to simply give up during the preparation period. But never forget that you are not you are not ready because of what others had to say about you. You weren't ready because when God when God is ready to pour out His Spirit, that's when you're ready. Not because man, you know, your friends might say, "Oh man, you wasn't ready for that." No, 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 no. You wasn't ready for promotion because God was preparing you when He was getting you ready for the next walk of life. Because he was like, okay, again, son, daughter, you were faithful with this little bit right here. Now, watch what I do. Because now I can use you. I can trust you. I can trust that you're going to not give up on me. I can trust that you're going to continue to, to go forth and tell people about me and give me the glory, not you. You won't take credit for everything that I'm doing in your life. You won't take credit for the things, your health, when you were sick and now you're healed. You won't take credit for that. You won't give the doctors the credit for that. You were telling me it was because of Jesus that I am healed and not sick. He said, by his stripes we were healed. Not that I am healed. I was already healed when he died on the cross. Oh, y'all ain't hear me this morning. So the thing about it is God is ready to bless us. Amen? Amen? So the preparation period. Think about this. Moses trained in the best schools and it still took him 40 years in the desert to walk into his destiny. David was anointed in front of everybody. He was anointed as king. But he ran for his life when he was messing around with, with Saul. He was trying, because Saul and everyone was trying to kill him. But it took him 17 years. Then he became king. But he still had to be processed in the furnace of failure when he learned how to understand the authority that was in. Because even then, when he became king, we know, we know the story. He still, hey, go over there and get Bathsheba. But God, the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. So if we know that even in our, our greatness, per se, that God still can take care of us if he took care of the king, and he said that I will still bless you. So evidently, the things that we went through was preparation for a time such as this. Don't want to leave the main man out. Even Jesus grew in stature. He had favor with God and man. Plus, he wasn't able to walk into it until his, he was 30. So think about if, if, if you was, you know, I talked about it last week, about uh, being Jesus' mother, watching him grow up. Because you know what God said to him, you know, the angel of the Lord said to him, hey, what's in you right now? He's going to save the world. He's going to take on the sins of the world. So can you imagine 30 years? And then his ministry was what? Three years. All that preparation. So sometimes we got to understand the things that we've been going through is just preparing us for our blessing. Amen? Amen? Think about this. If you don't realize that you have you are a work in progress, woefully, you know, you are going to fail. Let me say it again. If you don't realize that you are a work in progress, you are going to fail because none of us have arrived yet. And just because I'm sitting up here with the microphone, I have not arrived. I want y'all to, if you're praying for me, continue to pray for me. Because I'm praying for you on a daily basis. Amen? Amen? I don't know about you. But God keeps me grounded and helps me realize that I'm still being prepared. That God is preparing me for greatness. He's been preparing me for when we were, uh, when I was a little kid. 
when 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 my mama was was tapping me when I was getting out of place. Like I talked about last week when she used to twist my ear and I hated that. I hated that job. But it helped prepare me. The pain that I had to go through. So think about that. The things that you went through, the failures. When you thought you were going to move in and God said, nope, you ain't ready yet. When you thought you was going to get a, let's use something tangible, a new car. And God was like, nope, ain't you been faithful with the beater? The beater is still dirty. You won't even clean it up. Well, God, I'm waiting on a new car. No, I need you to be faithful with that one. And if you fall in love with that one, then I will move that one out of the way because then you'll trust me to drive the Jaguar, the BMW, the Maserati, or whatever, the Bentley. Because I'm trusting God. I told someone if I get that $500 million, I'm, I'm going to give me a Bentley, but I ain't going ain't to drive it to church because some people ain't ready for the pastor to drive the <laughs> <laughs> <try to> Bentley yet. <laughs> Amen. So Paul said in Philippians, Philippians 3 and 12, it'll be on the screen. He said, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press. What did he say? Press. I, but I press on to, pos, pu, to press. I press on to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed for me. So he, he knew that, that Jesus had possessed it for him already. He said, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. So it sounds like he was humbling himself. Now we know that Paul was a mighty man of God. But the thing about it, he said, I have not yet, I haven't arrived yet. He said, but I focus on this one thing, for forgetting the past. I'm forgetting the past. I'm forgetting what, what it was that I went through, but because Lord, I went through that for a reason to prepare me for now. So, so I'm forgetting the past and looking forward for what lies ahead. So he's looking for the blessings. I know, come on, y'all. Are y'all looking for the blessings? Are you forgetting about that time when you was hungry and then you didn't have anything to eat and the galley was closed? Oh, Jesus, I was there. I press, last verse, he said, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. My God. Isn't God good? So I want you to look at your neighbor if you could. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm a work in progress. Look at your other neighbor and tell them, I'm a work in progress. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you, I am a work in progress. Amen. <laughs> but the truth be told, if people found out there was some of the things that you're doing in your secret place, they would just write you off. Oh, come on now. They would, they would scandalize your name. They would tell everybody what you're doing or whatever. They'd be like, man, he's supposed to be a man of God. He's supposed to be the pastor. Oh, my God. He's supposed to be an elder, sister at the church, man, please. Evangelist, my foot. I know what you did last summer. <laughs> but simple and plain, there are some people connected to you that are not connected to the progress. They're not connected to the progress nor the process. So God formed Adam out of dirt. And now we know that everything that was made was made of nothing. But he, but he has made Adam out of something worth nothing. So I think about us. We're, 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 we're walking in God's greatness now because we know that in the beginning, God had already uh, told Adam what he needed to do. Till the garden. You have everything in here. You can have it all or whatever. There's some things that God told us. He said, okay, I'm, I'm going to use me because, again, I, I'm not going to get mad at me. I'm not going to get mad at me. I promise I, I'm not going to start coming to church because I said something about me. Um, if God says, Willie, um, I need you to, uh, to bring a safety pin. I'm just going to use something simple. A safety pin, and, uh, and I didn't bring it to church. And then one of y'all get in here and be like, man, I sure need a safety pin. I missed it. Because sometimes we think about it's the big things. But oftentimes it's the little things that still small voice. He may say, you know what? Um, I need you to write a check out to, um, to Tony Lyles this morning because um, there's some things he's been praying about. And uh, you, got, you got it. And I want you to bless him with it. There's some things that, that, that Teresa is going through in her in, in her in her life that she hasn't shared with nobody, but she shared with me in her private time, and I'm going to speak to you to meet her need. Imagine. 
And we get to a place so where we can so hear from God because we're blessed to be a blessing. So next time God says to you about anything, try it. Try it. Try to listen and see how we bless you. Because I tell you, there's something God has in store for us that's ready. He's ready. He wants to get to a place where he say, okay, I want you to even think about, okay, I want to go to California this afternoon. And you ain't even booked the ticket. And somebody call you up and say, hey, man, you know, um, I want to send you out to California because I want you to come out and preach to the youth or preach to the people or whatever. Can you imagine that? Because he said, I want, I'll be able to bless you more than you can even think or imagine. You say, okay, you want a scholarship for a ride for your kids? No, that's, that's simple. Trust me for something hard. But the Bible says there's nothing too hard for God. Hmm. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, the New Living Translation says, we now have the light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are fragile like clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that, this makes it clear that our great power is from who? It's from God. So we don't do anything on our own. It says it is from God and not of ourselves. So if God has put it in us, it's from God because he created us. He planted us in the garden. Amen? So from the dirt, he formed us. And now he still forms us. He uses the experiences of life, the things and the, the things that, that come to confront us to help to develop us and bless us and even oftentimes to develop us and bless us at the same time. You were a lost child because you were being formed. You were lost on your job because you were being formed. For his purpose and his greatness, you were bound for a season. But because he was forming you, there's some places he told you not to go because he was forming you. He was preparing you. He was creating you to be who you are today. Because think about those times when you wanted to go to the club and God was like, no, not tonight, baby. And he was like, well, God, I want to go. They're they going to be playing my favorite DJ out there. No. And then you find out some, the club got shot up. Oh, okay, okay. See, that was the Holy Spirit because that is not in my notes. That had to be the Holy Ghost. Because there are some times that God was trying to save you. Because I remember, if I could take a break for a second and share a quick testimony with you. There was a young lady when I was growing up, and my wife has heard this story, so I'm okay, I can say this. There was a young lady that I was in, I can say now, in lust with. Okay, and all through um, middle school and high school, I was just like, this is my girlfriend, never even kissed her, y'all, until what I'm about to tell you. So I came home on leave. And when I came home on leave, she ended up getting in a fight at the McDonald's. And I heard the voice of God say, go home, Willie. But now I remember y'all, I'm in lust now. You know, hey, you know, she don't took care of brother. Uh -huh. I told y'all I'm okay with being transparent because I'm okay with me. She took care of me. But the Holy Spirit was like, go home, Willie. I did. I'm going to tell y'all, I did. So we went to the dance. We went to the dance. And I walked in. Y'all remember back in the day they used to have dances. Y'all, y'all, young folks, y'all don't know about that. But we used to have dances before they had clubs. When we couldn't afford to go to the club, somebody would rent out a building and we would have a dance. Y'all remember that, right? Okay. So I walked through the little dance and my spirit still wasn't right. And y'all, I was not living for, for, for the Lord during that time. I was 19 years old. I was home on convalescent leave. I had just had hernia surgery. While and out, I should have been somewhere laying down. <laughs> So I went in there, and my spirit wasn't settled. So I came back out, y'all. And when I came back out, I remember. I'm going to show y'all what I did. I sat down on the curb, and I was like, man, something ain't right. And don't y'all know, within a couple of minutes, that girl that was fighting my quote-unquote girlfriend at the time rolled up. And what she did, when she rolled up, she got out the car fighting fighting my girlfriend, she's stabbing her with a knife and stuff like that. Now, God don't told me 
to take my butt home. Y'all remember that now. I want you to forget that part. But let me tell you how much I was, I was disobeying the Holy Spirit because the Lord had me park across the street. So the